Hey everybody, Seth V here for The Knife Center, and we've got a table full of the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's take a look. Whenever possible, we like to start with a Knife Center exclusive, and the first one on the table here today is kind of extra special because this, well, it says Knife Center, and if you're here, you know what Knife Center is. But what you might not know is that uh, we have a number of metal heads here at the Knife Center. One of which is our creative director, Bruce, who kind of just for fun, um, I think inspired by classic metal band logos, drew this up. Uh, it's Knife Center in that awesome metal style that we decided to kind of make something for public release. And this, is the Victorinox Tinker with Knife Center Metal Is Our Business Scales. Pretty cool little thing. These are $31.99. The classic Tinker tool set, um, arguably the quintessential Victorinox multi-tool. You've got the bottle opener with the uh, large flathead driver, can opener with the small flathead driver, main blade, of course, and pen blade to go with it. And then on the other side, full 3D Phillips. Very handy that. Plus the uh, awl with the hole in it to uh, do a little sewing should you need to. And of course, toothpick and tweezers to round things out. These are <laughs> just a lot of fun, a really cool, um, you know, whether you like knife center or you like metal music or you just like Victorinox knives with some special scales. These tinkers are pretty sweet, at least we think so. Next up is a fresh batch of Mac 2s from McNeese. These are the Mac 2 3.5s with the appropriately named uh, three and a half inch blade length. These all feature magna cut steel. They all are manual um, titanium frame locks and they come in a bunch of cool handle types. I pulled the ones that really stood out to me. We got the frag here on the bottom and the jigged on the top. Probably can't see that with my fingers over it, but Thomas will get some good B-roll. These are American made. McNeese is uh, really kind of growing his knife making operation off the back of the success of this design. And uh, having one in hand, it's really hard not to love it. Um, these are fairly expensive being American made titanium frame lock folders. This frag version is $565, the jigged version is $595, and we have some other slightly cheaper versions, like just with smooth handles, starting at $467. Definitely a premium product, and they absolutely deliver. I mean, the fact that they're selling out so quickly. Of course, titanium frame locks are nothing new, but the uh, design and the implementation here is what really sets these apart. The handle is I, would, I wouldn't call it compact, but it's not oversized. It's, it's hand filling without being over large. And part of that impression comes from how much blade McNeese has managed to fit into this relatively compact handle. The closed length is about four and a quarter inches, but almost every millimeter of that is occupied by the blade when closed, partially because of the way the pivot is so far forward, it's just, all edge when this thing comes out. Super great amount of usable real estate on that blade with a hand filling handle. Nice little flare at the end to really fill out your grip in the uh, pinky and ring fingers where you kind of need that grip the most to really power through cuts. Great, uh, slightly wider than average, let's say drop point blade. Got a lot of power through the belly here. Good curvature, but a nice length of flat to uh, do some nice consistent cutting. The grind itself is phenomenal. It comes down to a really, really nicely keen edge that's gonna slice quite well, even though the blade stock is nice and thick and tough. These are made out of magna cut. So really doing the most with that um, alloy. You've got the thin edge to take advantage of magna cut's toughness. Um, and of course the action is phenomenal. These are running on bearings. They flick out with just a satisfying 
kind of kinetics. They almost feel a little assisted the way they spring away from your thumb there. Um, you can also flick them open. And um, one thing I'll say, uh, frame locks tend to have this problem where if you're putting too much pressure on the lock bar when they're closed, they can be challenging to open. But something about these McNeese, they've really tuned them so that even if you're kind of bearing down on the lock bar, they still pop open no problem. Let's check out the jig one here while I tell you that these will almost certainly sell out very quickly over at the website. So they went live as of this video. If you really want one, stop now, go grab one, come back, finish the video. Yeah, come back. <laughs> Remember to come back. We still got a lot more knives to get through. Next up is a new one from Giant Mouse. Uh, but in many ways, it's a kind of return to their very first knife. This is the Biblio XL. And in its proportions and silhouette, it is almost identical to the very first knife that Giant Mouse ever released, the GM1. This version has three and a quarter of um, Vanitas steel. I believe that's Vanitas 4. A kind of high toughness, semi-stainless tool steel, quite similar to 4V, CPM 4V, if you're familiar with that. This version comes in at $285 but there's also a version with micarta scales and LMAX steel that comes in at 225. But yeah, this is, uh, this is the GM1 all over again. And um, it is something of Giant Mouse's signature or flagship design. And I'm actually personally really happy to see it back at this size again. Um, it feels fantastic in the hand. These contoured scales are super comfortable. You know, the, the ergonomics are, um, they're prescriptive in that you've got lots of little grooves in here that tell your fingers where to go, but they don't feel like they are trapping your fingers. I mean, you know, the guys at Giant Mouse, um, Jesper and Jens are truly masters of design, and this is one of the best. These knives are made in Italy. They have that luxurious feel of Italian craftsmanship, nice crown spine, Beautiful action, very smooth. You can operate that via the flipper or uh, flick it open with their uh, hole in the blade there. Feels great, really dialed in. It's kind of fun actually. If you look at pictures of the old GM1 and compare it to this, you'll see the little tweaks that they've done to just improve and iterate on that design over time. The flipper tabs a little smaller than on the original design which allows you to use more of the edge against the cutting board. These knives use a wire clip, which lets the knife ride in the pocket deeper. Very cool to see them updating and returning to this design over time and just making it better and better and better. I might actually have to pick one of these up. I've, I've been uh, playing with it and it's sort of sticking in my hand. Always a bad sign when that happens, but um, we'll see. A great one from Giant Mouse for sure. And this is the new RIV liner lock. You can see it's got the same kind of silhouette as the Biblio, definitely riffing on the same themes at least. This version has green micarta and magna cut blade seal, and it comes in at $195. You can also get it with solid bronze handles, also magna cut steel for $235. Everything that makes the Big Brother Biblio work so great translates really well to this smaller scale. This grip back here doesn't make quite as much sense. I've only got three fingers at best. Uh, still comfortable though, it's worth saying, but definitely very much meant to be used in the choked up position. And um, this is kind of interesting. Sort of a design, a design detail that's worth pointing out. It's very difficult to just take a larger design and make it small. You cannot simply scale it down and expect it to work in the same way. You can see that the finger choil in particular, even though this knife is that much smaller, still has the exact same circumference in its finger choil as its bigger brother, which means that it's just as accommodating for your finger. It doesn't shrink down and kind of make it such that the, the heel of the blade there is gonna get in the way of your finger using it comfortably, you still got that confident space to be able to squeeze it and use it and put this thing to work. The blade stock is also thinner than, than on the Biblio XL, meaning that this is gonna 
slice a little better. Just a fantastic design. Seeing them together here really shows how much thought went into these two designs. You know, these first came out as a frame lock, but for my money, I would take the liner lock. Especially on a knife this small, you can kind of run into that problem I was talking about with the McNeese, where the knife locks itself closed a little bit, if you're careful, uh, unless you're careful to get your finger off a lock bar. With a liner lock, that just doesn't happen, so. Deploys great, works great every time, whether you're using the flipper or just flicking it open or rolling it slowly. Wire clip, yeah, these are sweet. Speaking of scaled down designs, this is the new Boker Bronco Mini. Uh, the handle is the same size as the full-size Bronco, but the blade length is just 3.5 inches, and in this case is 80 CRV2 carbon steel. Um, I like that they've given the carbon steel this cool black stone wash treatment. It's gonna um, help protect it from uh, future rust problems, plus giving it this cool uh, sort of broken in look already. The Bronco is actually made in Solingen, Germany, and it comes in at just $104.51. Pretty good price, uh, given the country of origin and the quality that we're working with here. Got full tank construction, you can see it protruding at the end there. That would make a great flat hammer spot for driving intense stakes, smashing things open, doing any sort of impact work. Um, I definitely feel like this was meant to be a camp companion even uh, sort of a bushcraft tool. As you can see, the spine has been given an extra little pass on a grinder or something to crisp up the edge. Definitely gonna be able to strike a fire steel with that portion. And I like that they've not done the whole length. You can see the transition right there. So that when you put your thumb up here, it's not hitting that sharpened spine. It's very comfortable to hold it this way. The handle, some kind of uh, uh, molded, sort of rubberized compound. Grippy, comfortable. You can feel that slight impact resistance. Really nice contouring going on. Just a uh, really compelling, slightly small companion knife. Um, I could even see this being a cool EDC option. And uh, it comes with this Kydex sheath. Also, there's a belt attachment in the box, but let's see if we can use a standard tech lock on this. Yep, definitely tech lock compatible, so lots of options to carry this thing. Good thumb ramp. The Boker Bronco Mini. Keeping the fixed blade train rolling, we've got a new one from Petrified Fish. This is the Bison. Comes in at $38.99. We've got 14C28N steel. They're calling this a neck knife, and you could definitely carry it like that, but I think it would make a pretty good uh, pocket fix blade too if you were to take the sheath and add something like an ulti clip there. Nice and slim without any handle scales to uh, keep a low profile in your pocket. And uh, surprisingly comfortable, despite the lack of handle scales, when it's in your hand. Um, it's a challenge to make a knife without handle scales that's comfortable, but Thanks to all this length going on here, uh, it works pretty well. I've easily got four fingers on it um, in a fist grip. And thanks to this extra little hole in the blade right there, works great in a pinch grip to manipulate the knife. And in that grip, I've got plenty of room to handle this thing. With that 14C28 and steel, you're gonna have good toughness, good stain resistance, nice continuous curve to this Belly means that uh, it's going to be a good little Skinner knife, easy to control the tip since it's so uh, close to the edge of the handle there. Pretty cool little design and um, always great to see budget fixed blades coming from a brand like Petrified Fish that delivers so much value. This also comes with a uh, tech lock in the box. so. Is it, a, is it actually like a Tech Lock branded Tech Lock? Uh, tech Lock style. Tech Lock style, at least. Yeah, so you can put it on your belt. You can wear it around your neck. Cool EDC option fixed blade from Petrified Fish. Look at that paracord wrap. That'd be a pretty good scout carry. Yeah, yeah. If anybody paracord wraps one of these, tag us on Instagram. I want, I want to see how you do it.
I want to see what it looks like. Very cool. And follow us on Instagram for product updates. Please do. Next up is a new fixed blade from Civivi. This is the Storm Ridge and it comes in at $89.25. This is a cool fixed blade. Uh, Civivi has made a lot of wild and stylish fixed blades, but this one to me seems like uh, just a dedicated practical utility fixed blade. We've got a pretty good all around drop point with maybe a little more belly than average. Uh, perhaps this would be a good skinny knife, good small hunting knife. The blade stock thickness on these is nice and thin at just three millimeters. And you've got a full flat grind that comes down to quite an acute edge for some serious cutting power. Definitely gonna be a great slicer. Um, and thanks to the Nitro V blade steel, you're gonna get a good balance of toughness and stainlessness. Um, Nitro V is very similar to 14C28N. So if you've used that, you kind of know what to expect here. Um, the construction is full tang, so it's gonna be uh, a knife you can beat on a little bit. You know, it's not gonna be popping open wood with its full flat grind, but definitely can handle a few knocks for sure. And the ergonomics are, are decent. They don't fill the hand quite like you might expect given its profile. Uh, it's still kind of narrow. So this to me feels like a knife that's a little bit more home in the fingertips than in the meat of the hand in a uh, full fisted grip. But that said, it's very comfortable. It, uh, the sculpting really makes it a, a comfortable place to wrap your hand around at least. Works great in a pinch grip too, I'd say. Yeah, whether this is like a, a uh, companion blade, EDC, semi-tactical hunting knife, they've kind of combined a lot of uh, design cues into the Storm Ridge. And I think this might be one of Civivi's best fixed blades yet, honestly. I pulled this cool desert tan coated version, um, but it also comes in a more vanilla, shall we say, all black and green micarta with satin blade. And the sheath, as you might expect, Kydex with Civivi's own T-clip. I actually really like these T-clips. I've used a couple of them myself. They work great on all different sizes of belts. I think they go up to two inches and uh, you can, uh, thanks to these little sliders on the inside here, they work with virtually every kind of screw pattern for a sheath since you can use any point in this whole space there. Okay, we are done with fixed blades for today actually. So we're back to the folders now, but we're sticking with Civivi with a new one designed by Ben Peterson. This is the Sendi. Very cool uh, Barlow inspired flipper with a number of unique features. So. Uh, right off the bat, let's talk about what makes this knife extra special. We've got two tools buried at the end of the handle there. Much like a Swiss Army knife, it is tweezers and a toothpick. Very cool. Just for curiosity's sake, we actually tested if you could put Victorinox's toothpick and tweezers in there. And uh, the toothpick definitely doesn't have the retention, like it'll fall right out, but the tweezers will fit. Um, but in order to fit flush, you're gonna have to maybe modify this cutout a little bit. Just an interesting detail, the addition of a toothpick and tweezers makes this everyday carry knife that much more cool and capable. They really just slip in unnoticed. They don't feel like a gimmick, if you know what I mean. Like, they're genuinely good toothpick and tweezers, and uh, once you have them, you'll probably <laughs> surprise yourself with how much you actually use them. Other cool thing about this knife is the flipper tab implementation. It's super, super low profile. There's just a little cutout on the handle and a tiny little tab, but it's got enough jimping and the perfect detent to flip open easily every time. And the blade, it comes in two blade shapes. This is the Spay blade, 2.8 inches of Nitro V stainless steel. Nice, not a reverse tanto, tip. We can disagree. Well, Ben does call it the Spay Blade, so uh, let's just say a classically inspired 
slip joint heritage with this one. The handle is very much like an old school Barlow. You know, we, we don't have the bolster, but the shape is there. Just a uh, gently sloping symmetrical shape that's gonna work great in any grip you can hold this thing in. Liner lock, ball bearings, all the other Civivi stuff you know and love is here and working great. It does come in another blade shape though. This is the drop point um, with Gaborsha wood scales, right? Yes. So the price on this version, this is actually the most expensive with the wood scales at $65.79. That um, red and green G10 is $63.50. It also comes in micarta and uh, in all black G10 as well. This drop point is very nicely implemented. I like the, the profile. It's just a classic drop point. Gonna work great. I, I, I don't know, which one do you prefer? I kind of prefer the looks of the spay blade. It, to me, it kind of goes good with the more straight and angular handle, but I feel like I'd prefer using the drop point. So I don't know. I'm guess, I guess I'm glad that uh, we get to have both options to choose from. Next up is, well, you know what this is. This is an Elementum, but this one is extra special with Lexan handles. So if you liked the translucence of Ultim, but would prefer something maybe a little better hydrated, shall we say? Lexan is the way to go. It is uh, just a classic polycarbonate. I think it's also known as plexiglass um, as a generic term. It's strong, it is smooth, but thanks to the milled texture on these handles, uh, surprisingly grippy actually. It works pretty well. I definitely feel like there's some, some confidence in this grip with those little grooves, um, but man, it is just perfectly transparent. No color at all. You can just see straight through that thing to the skeletonized liners and uh, out to the other side. Just like the classic Elementum has D2 steel, just under three inches of it and comes in at $51. So I have a feeling, I don't have any special knowledge, but I have a feeling that if this knife does well, we will see more clear Lexan handles on Civivis in the future. So I don't know. Uh, maybe, I, might, I might be wrong about that, but we'll see. Next up is the Storm Howl. This is uh, maybe a bit of a companion folder to the Storm Ridge fixed blade. I don't know, I see some similarities in the handles at least, but uh, this thing is pretty cool. It is a uh, aluminum handled folder, which I happen to really like. I, I enjoy the way that aluminum feels. I like that it's very rigid, you get this you know, the confidence inspiring strength of metal handles, but with some kind of agility and lightweight feeling that I think really works. This has 3.3 inches of Nitro V steel and comes in at $74.80. Um, I don't think I've seen a treatment on the aluminum handles quite like this before. Got these milled lines that have been uh, brushed. So you get a little more texture. It's not an aggressive texture, but it's Definitely there, definitely more grippy than a smooth aluminum handle. So if that's something that bothers you about aluminum handles, this could be a cool option. Also happens to look pretty cool. And matching the black and satin on the handle, we've got satin flats with a black stone washed grind. Nice clip point shape, beautifully thin behind the edge as almost all Civivis are, and a button lock for just impeccable flipping action, fidget friendly, finger safe, beautiful. One other nice little detail, we've got a spot for an ambidextrous clip too. So lefties or righties, take your pick. Okay, from Civivi's sister brand, Sencut, we have the new Pulse Wave. This too has button lock, and this version has micarta scales and a black coated 9CR18 MOV blade. It also comes with black G10, gray G10. Those are gonna be $44.80, but this version is $45.90. Sencut is somehow delivering even more value than Civivi. Um, the knives feel maybe a little more basic, but just as well built. So you're getting a really, really dependable 
you know, platform to work with. There are some kind of iterations and, and different versions of these button lock flippers that they're making at different sizes and stuff. You honestly cannot go wrong with any of them. They are just, it feels every bit as good as the more expensive Civivi. Just fantastic crisp action, whether you're using a thumb stud or the flipper. The micarta is nice and grippy, but still smooth. Reversible deep carry pocket clip. Just all the details are there. Unbelievable value. And again, great geometry for actually cutting. Like thin blade stock, thin edge, gonna be an awesome slicer, awesome EDC choice. All right, let's bump up to some premium options from Wheat. This is the new OAO. Uh, it stands for one and only, and it is designed by the one and only Tashi Barucha. If you couldn't tell from the way this knife looks, his, his style is very identifiable to me. Super angular, super confident lines and curves that all combine into a very, very stylish look. And um, the way this knife has been built is also quite impressive. First of all, it's an integral. So totally seamless back there with a little milled bevel up the back. This is the one Wii knife branding you get. The show side of the blade is totally clean. Um, for an e just everything about this knife is super, super clean. All of the hardware has either been hidden behind this huge fat carbon overlay. Actually, it's an inlay, technically, except for the one screw that holds on the pocket clip and in kind of a, a unique for Wii knives move, the filler plate that uh, you can swap out with another pocket clip that comes in the box. So if you want to carry this left-handed, you, uh, you can do that. Even though the clip is asymmetrical, comes with a second one. So you can just pop that on. Action is phenomenal. Glassy smooth on the clothes. Let's talk about the materials and the price. So these are made from titanium. And while this one has the green fat carbon inlays, it also comes with a uh, gold or silver foil carbon fiber. Or for a bit of a price bump, you can get a huge piece of Timascus inlaid into this. So if you go for the Timascus, it's gonna be $579 for all the, uh, for this version, it's 488. And for the gold and silver carbon foil, 437. All the versions have CPM20 CV blade steel, given a coating or this beautiful hand brushed horizontal satin. Really, really silky feeling, silky looking, frankly. Um, yeah, just a total showpiece of both Wii's manufacturing and of Tashi's design. Next up is the Hyperactive. Now, the big news with this one is the fact that all of these are using Vanax blade steel. Yeah. I, I'm just as surprised as you might be. Um, I didn't expect Wii knives to jump into the deep end of the super steels with Vanax, but here it is on this very cool knife. This version is gonna come in at $386.75. You can spend a little more or a little less these start at 395 and to me this is all about the the finishing each version of this knife has a ton of different finishes going on from the coating with the tumbling that brings out the anodized kind of edges of the uh of the bevels and milling on this to the entropic electro anodized titanium inlays on this version you know the the blade has been given this very impressive compound grind with horizontal satin flats. Just a lot going on with this knife. A suitable showpiece for that Vanax blade steel. I won't go deep into Vanax science here, but even among super steels, it is a pretty unique and rare choice. Uh, it's hard to make. It requires, I believe, it requires uh, certain steps being performed in a vacuum to keep the uh, unusual amount of nitrogen trapped in the steel. You should get outstanding stainlessness, edge retention, and a decent amount of toughness too. So just a really cool choice. Definitely a rare bird if you're into collecting 
different types of blade steels. Cool to see it here and at a, uh, at least an attainable price from Wheat. Okay, let's take a big jump down in price back to the budget spectrum with a new one from Petrified Fish. This is the Hourglass. Um, and even though I just called it a budget knife, uh, and it does come in at $58.99, there's a lot on this knife feature-wise that uh, would not lead you to think that it was this affordable. For example, these bolsters are anodized titanium. This is a burl wood. It's got ceramic ball bearings in the pivot and K110 steel, which is like brand name D2. All of those things come at a price premium, and yet this knife is just under $60. It's also a pretty good size. 3.5 inches of blade, good handle size to grip onto here. I like that blade profile. Kind of reminds me of like a Navaja style. Um, just a, a swagadocious clip point going on, big belly, kind of a negative blade angle to uh, cut aggressively on pull cuts. Definitely a cool option, proving yet again that Petrified Fish is always delivering when it comes to value. Next up is an all new folder from Spartan Blades. This is the Spartan Nemec Liner Lock. As you can see, this is very much an executive style knife. Super, super thin, super slender, folds up into an almost pen-like silhouette when closed. But the details are really, really nice. This might be my personal favorite executive knife. At least the, the first, my, my favorite one I've seen this year. <laughs> this version has milled carbon fiber scales and S35 VN blade steel and comes in at $167.95. Uh, it also comes with titanium handles, uh, S35 blade steel again for $180. But uh, this was the version that caught my eye. Got a real stealthy look going on with the all black colorway and a nice balance and lightweight thanks to those carbon fiber scales. Action is also superb. I like the geometry of the flipper tab. It's very comfortable. It doesn't feel quite as pointy as it looks, I think. Works great to get the blade out. Got a good amount of blade to work with here, three and a half inches, meaning also that you have a decently sized handle that uh, despite its you know, slenderness gives you plenty to work with in various grips. You know, a knife that's this shape is never gonna fill your hand exactly, but uh, the, the balance here is such that it feels very easy to manipulate, very easy to use. Um, whether you're you know, an executive or not, there's a lot to like about um, a knife with this silhouette. The clip here is a discreet sort of wire, bent wire clip. It is mounted from the back and uh, can be swapped over for left hand carry as well. You know, this is the kind of knife that is light enough to carry in a shirt pocket. The clip's gonna kind of make it look like a pen. Just very discreet, um, smooth enough that you could wear it with some dress pants or something that's not super rugged, um, but got enough traction on the handle that it feels like a tool that you can actually use. It's a, a really nicely balanced, nicely designed executive style knife from Spartan. And last on the table is a new version of the Spyderco Military 2. This is the first version with upgraded blade steel. And as you might guess from the blurple g handles, we've got S110V here. Um, this is a configuration that Spyderco has been offering for years. It offers, you know, truly top tier edge retention, um, as well as top tier stainlessness. It's a great option for a big slicey knife like this. I mean, this thing is gonna tear through abrasive materials like cardboard and just not quit. Of course, since it's a military too, you've got all the improvements that come with that, such as the compression lock, the upsized finger choil there, the four-way positionable clip. So still comes tipped down, 
just like the old militaries did, but you can swap that to tip up, left or right hand side, no problem. These are of course made in the USA. And they come in at $224. Considering that S30V versions with coated blades come in at around $224, well, that's a pretty sweet value for a remarkable super steel here. If you've been waiting on an upgraded version to give the Military 2 a shot, this is the one to check out. You know, as, as uh, aftermarket scales begin to roll out for the Military 2, there's only gonna be more and more options to customize these things. And, you know, it's just, it's that awesome military platform upgraded for the modern age. This is a uh, essential Spyderco design in my opinion, definitely a very important Spyderco design. And if you like big folders or think you might like big folders, the Military 2 is definitely one to check out. Well, that does it for today. We've reached the end of the table, which means that it's time to remind you about our knife rewards program. Because if you're gonna spend any money on any of these knives here, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm Seth V for the Knife Center. I'll see you next time.